If your teddy bear came to life, started hunting you down, and will stop at nothing until you and everyone you love is dead, what would you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to defeat the evil teddy bear in Benny Loves You. Jack here has no idea that his entire life is about to be turned upside down. He still lives with his parents, and on his 35th birthday, there was an accident and both his parents died at the same time. Ten months later, an agent tells him that if he doesn't pay the house, the company will have to repossess it. He feels depressed about his life, so he decides to make some changes. He throws out all his childhood toys. He gets to his favorite toy called Benny that kept him safe from nightmares when he was a child. He puts it in a box and takes it to a room along with his old toys that he plans on throwing away. After he falls asleep, the box that contains Benny starts shaking, and smoke comes out, then the lid bursts open. Benny has come to life and he is about to destroy a lot of lives. Back at his room, the thunder scares Jack from his sleep. And as soon as he wakes up, Benny cuts the lights. Jack hears a noise coming from another part of the house. Frightened, he goes to investigate with his lightsaber, as if that's going to do any damage. He gets to the room where he threw all the old toys and finds everything destroyed. He finds Benny sitting in the middle of the room, surrounded by all of his other favorite teddies, but all of their heads have been ripped off. This should have been his first sign of danger. He calls the police and tells them what happened, but they don't take him seriously because only the toys were destroyed. Later, he tries to get some work done, but he gets no ideas and ends up falling asleep. Feeling very sleepy, he goes to bed and it takes him a minute to realize that there is a severed head in his bed. Terrified, he kicks the head away and realizes that it is his agent from earlier. Benny walks in with his cute little legs and a knife in hand. He jumps forward, stabs the severed head, then runs out of the room. Seeing this, Jack jumps out of his bed, locks the door, and barricades it with a shelf. He doesn't know this yet, but this cute little teddy is going to be an absolute nightmare. That's one down, and five more to go. Now, Jack here goes to bed, then suddenly realizes that he's holding something that's not normally there. He panics and kicks off the head, and for the first time, Benny the teddy reveals himself to his owner. Jack here is either the calmest person on the planet, or just doesn't fully realize the danger he is in. Your teddy coming to life is nice and all, but seeing it butcher someone is a lot of red flags. He locks the door after the teddy leaves and ends up falling asleep next to the head. If we look closely enough, we will see that there is a couple of things that we would have done better. First, let's give Jack some credit for barricading the door. That greatly reduces the chances that we will suffer from a random attack. And since there's only one door, if the teddy tries to break in, we will see the danger coming from a mile away and this will give us time to prepare ourselves. At least we will not be ambushed. Now, what Jack did after that was where he failed. When faced with danger, the first thing we should always do is to closely assess our surroundings to see what we can use to our advantage. Since Jack was locked in the room the entire time, he had enough time to think, but he just fell asleep. If we look closely at the layout of the room, we see that there are a couple of windows. Chances are, the teddy is not expecting us to escape from the house through them. If we cover the window with a pillow, we can break it without making any noise, then easily sneak out. After we are free, we can use the element of surprise to attack the teddy and stop him from ever killing anyone else. Jack ends up falling asleep on the foot of the bed next to the severed head and is woken up by a knock on the door. He goes to investigate, and he sees blood splattered everywhere. At the living room, he sees the rest of the body still sitting on a chair with the intestines wrapped around the neck. And these words were written on the wall. Jack cannot believe what he is seeing. Benny is one sick teddy. He sits down and takes a minute to process the whole situation. Then hears the knock on the door again. He peeps through the window and sees the two policemen from before. He refuses to let them in just yet. Panicking, 
he goes to the mess and starts cleaning it up. When he's ready, he lets them in. They show him a photo of the agent and ask whether he has seen him, but Jack lies that he hasn't. One policeman gets hungry and starts looking for food, but Jack stops them before they find the severed head hidden in the cupboard. That was a close one. The policemen eventually leave, and just after closing the door, the body falls out from where it was hidden. Jack then picks up a knife and calls him. He then asks Benny why he killed the man, and Benny says that it's because he loves him. He now decides to lay some rules for Benny, that he can keep living with him under the condition that nobody else dies, until he figures out what to do, and makes Benny promise not to kill people just because he doesn't like them. A few days later, at work, his boss asks him to look after his puppy during the weekend, and at the same time, his friend also sets up a date with him at his house on the same day. Later, back at the house, Jack's new agent shows up with a woman to try and sell her the house. They get to the bedroom and see these words written on the wall. While they're arguing, Benny suddenly sticks a signpost through the agent's stomach, and blood squirts all over the woman. She screams and runs for the door, but finds that they have already been locked. Benny throws plates at her as she runs, only to find the other door has also been locked. She sees the closet, and runs and hides herself inside it. She peeks, and sees a phone on the table right in front of her, and quickly takes it and goes back to hiding. She starts dialing for the police, when suddenly, Benny appears inside the closet. Terrified, she crawls out and hides on the couch behind the pillows. Benny then prepares some hot tea, then pours it on the agent to finish him off. He then brings a kettle full of hot water and melts her face. She screams in pain, then runs upstairs. She sees a ladder leading up to the attic, so she climbs it and lets herself in. But before she could close the door, the phone falls right next to Benny, and the ladder falls off so she can't get out. He had not seen where the woman had gone, but now notices her. Then the woman locks herself in the attic. Now she can't escape, and can't call for help. This is absolutely horrifying. That's two down, and four more to go. Now, your friend just got killed right in front of you, and you have also seen a talking teddy bear. Your first response will be mind-numbing fear. As soon as you recognize fear, some parts of your brain actually shut down. Now it's difficult to think clearly and make good decisions. Like in the case of this woman, her brain becomes foggy and as you have seen, some of the decisions she made were really dumb. I'm sure that if she was calm, she would have made better decisions to save her but she chooses to flee away from the area. There is nothing she could have done to help our agent friend here. With a stick as big as that, through his belly, he is already dead meat. Now, Benny here was a little clever when he was planning this murder. As you can see, he had already anticipated that one or both of them would try to escape the house. So he closed the doors beforehand. To be fair to the woman, your levels of despair increase when your plans to escape are thrown out the window. Speaking of throwing things out the window, this house is not made of armored glass. This window here is big enough that any meaningful impact applied will shatter it to pieces. The second she found the second door is closed, there is one thing we could have done. If you look around this room, you'll see that there are a couple things we can throw at this window. Judging from the size of this woman, she looks strong enough to be able to lift them up and fling them at the window. Anything is worth trying here, because our lives are at stake. And since we are much larger than Benny, there is no way he is catching us on a foot race. Now, she hides in the closet, except the teddy had already anticipated and was somehow already waiting for her inside. She tries calling the police, but as you can see from the location of this house, there was no way they were ever going to get here in time to save us. This means that, at the moment, we are on our own. She clumsily escapes the closet. Now, in this situation, there was one thing we could have done that Clumsy here never even thought of. We could have closed the door while the teddy is still inside and use our bodies to barricade the door. Besides, if we had enough time, we might be able to push the couch up against the door. Afterwards, she decides to hide behind the pillows. If this is the best idea that we can come up with in this situation, we are absolutely 
toast. Benny even took the time to go and boil some water, which he uses to melt her face off. Jack walks in and bumps into something. It is the dead agent. Jack drops his bag in disbelief. He had clearly told Benny not to kill another person. He yells at Benny for adding another dead body, then goes and also buries it in the backyard. Later, while in his room, Benny shows up at the door and wants to cuddle, but Jack is still mad at him, so he shuts the door in his face. Then Benny walks away looking sad. Meanwhile, the woman is still trapped in the attic. The following day, Jack puts Benny in a box and tells him to stay quiet. He has a date lined up and he can't afford to let Benny mess that up. While on the date, Benny manages to swing the boxes and they fall down, which breaks him free, and then picks out a weapon. He is out for blood. While on their date, Jack's boss shows up with his dog and leaves it with him to be taken care of for the night. Benny walks past the dog with an axe, but then overhears Jack saying that he loves dogs. So, he turns around and murders the poor little pug. At the couch, Jack spots Benny behind her. He goes to investigate and sees the dog hung by its neck. Panicking, he hurries to clean the blood and hide the corpse before the woman notices. She comes looking for him, and Benny sneaks up behind her. She doesn't know that he's alive, so she cuddles him. Jack warns her to put him down, and at the same time, Benny prepares himself to kill her. Thinking fast, Jack says that he doesn't love her, so Benny stops. Jack then pretends that he is sick to get the woman to leave, to stop Benny from killing her. But that just makes her want to stay and take care of him. She leads him to his bedroom and makes him lie down, but Jack slips away and goes to look for Benny. Jack remembers that he hid the corpse in the washing machine, so he takes it out and desperately tries to make it look like it's not dead. Meanwhile, the woman is waiting for him in his bedroom. His boss now starts heading back to pick up his dog, while Jack calls the local shelters to look for a replacement. When he looks where he had put the corpse, he finds it missing. Upstairs, Benny opens the door. The woman gets happy, thinking that it is Jack. Suddenly, Jack bursts into the room and snatches the knife away from Benny. And when the woman turns around, it looks like he's killing the dog. To save himself, he starts stabbing the corpse to make it look like he was saving it from attacking her. He throws it out the window and it conveniently lands on his boss's car, which has just pulled up. Then everyone in the car starts freaking out. Jack runs outside, and his boss looks very angry. He has no words to explain. The next day, Jack gets fired from his job. That night, Benny wakes him up because he wants to play, but Jack tells him to go away. Benny would have none of that. So, he grabs Jack's sheets, and this forces Jack to chase after him. He then hears a whimpering voice. He investigates and cannot believe his eyes. Benny had gifted him an odd present. Jack opens it and is shocked to see that it is his boss. Jack tries explaining that this was not his doing. He starts untying him, but his boss starts treating him like a dog. This makes him furious, so he refuses to untie him unless his salary was doubled. His boss agrees, but Jack gets cocky and keeps keeps pushing it. Suddenly, Benny sticks a fork in his throat and this kills him. This is getting out of hand. Jack starts fuming. This is the last straw. He is tired of the murderous toy that wants to cuddle all the time. He now hates Benny. He puts him in a wooden coffin and nails it shut. He takes him deep into a forest and buries him alive, then heads back home and celebrates what's left of his birthday in tears. He now knows that there's no coming back from this. He also buries buries his boss in the backyard, then tries to find some sleep. That's four down, and two more to go. Now, Jack here did something very clever. He trapped Benny in a coffin, and locked it shut with nails, then buried him. His idea was very good, but his execution was poor. Instead of just burying him, I would dig an even deeper hole and fill the entire thing with cement, making it impossible for him to climb out. An even better idea would be to throw Benny along with the coffin and fire and watch him turn to ashes. This will make sure that he never comes back to bother a single soul again. The following day, Jack starts cleaning up the blood from the previous night, when suddenly, he hears a knock on the door. He opens it and sees his lady friend. That night, Benny somehow manages to dig himself out of the coffin and back to the surface. Back at the house, she helps him clean things up 
and they bond over this. Meanwhile, Benny is sad that his owner threw him out. I mean, all he wanted was some cuddles and to murder anyone who loved Jack. Now he walks around aimlessly in the rain and looks very depressed. He decides he has had enough, so now he plans his revenge. According to Benny, everyone must die. He finds a store with masks, so he breaks in and steals one. The following morning, the woman readies herself to leave. She doesn't notice that Benny is standing right next to the door. She gets into the car and drives to the office, and Benny jumps to the roof and follows her. Jack eventually wakes up and sees all the clues that Benny left behind and knows that Benny is back for revenge. She gets to the office, and Benny follows her and drops on the floor. Richard runs into him and picks him up. Meanwhile, Jack rushes to the office because he knows that there will be a bloodbath if he doesn't get there on time. He gets there and is relieved that nothing bad has happened yet. Jack warns them to stay away from the teddy, that he is alive and will kill them all. But everyone laughs at him. To prove that Benny is alive, he says that he loves Richard. That triggers him, so he stabs Richard in his hand. Panicking, the woman falls down in fear, and Benny now goes for her next. However, Jack stands between them and tells Benny that he'll have to go through him to get to her. Richard then takes out the knife from his hand, and the three of them bolt for the door. Benny chases after them, but they lock the door behind them before Benny gets through and barricade it with a chair. Then they get in the car and drive back to the house. Meanwhile, Benny paces around the door, and when he sees that he can't get out, he picks up the knife and goes on to kill everyone in the room. The last person tries to escape through the door, but Benny throws the knife at his back and this kills him. And that makes the chair that was blocking it to fall off. Benny is now free and will stop at nothing until they are all dead. Let's pay attention to this. There are 10 people in the room. They each just witnessed a teddy stab someone. There should be enough people in the room that we can gang up on the teddy all at once and destroy it in an instant. To be fair to them, none of them had seen a toy come to life before and they may have been hesitant to act, but there had to be some people in the room who thrive under pressure. If we just stay organized, we can destroy the bunny ourselves and avoid a major massacre. Now, the fascinating thing is that if we take a step back to analyze the objects in the room that we can use, there are plenty of resources at our disposal. These two each have a book that can be used to block the knife attacks. Almost everyone else in the room is drinking a beverage, and these mugs can all be thrown which means that we can attack the teddy from a distance. In addition to that, the beverages in these mugs can be splashed at Benny, and since his body is made of cotton, we can soak him and this will make him heavier, and it would be harder for him to move. Then we can use this opportunity to attack. If we look even closely, we can see a fire extinguisher here. This is an amazing weapon if we know how to use it to its full potential. We can have one of us spray the teddy in his eyes, and this will temporarily blind him. This will give us an amazing opportunity to grab the knife away from him then we can rain all kinds of attacks on him. And one more thing, why did none of them think to kick the bunny away? A couple of kicks and Benny will be absolutely crushed. Back at the house, the three of them now decide to fight back. They collect weapons and set traps around the house. Jack also arms his robot prototype with a circular saw blade. At the same time, Benny breaks into a store and steals small swords and a shuriken. Later, Benny arrives at the house. Both Richard and Jack wait downstairs with flamethrowers while the lady friend waits upstairs. Benny decides to climb down the manhole and gets in through the toilet. Hearing this, Jack gets up but finds Benny already in the house. He torches him with the flamethrower, but Benny dodges it with a backflip, then throws the shuriken to block the flamethrower. Jack then takes out his controller and brings out his robot prototype to attack him. Benny dodges the first attack easily. They keep fighting and the robot finally pins him to the wall and presses the circular blade against him to destroy him. Benny, however, pushes the kitchen counter and the blade from above drops on the robot and it loses its balance. Benny then jumps on his back and cuts some wires, 
making the robot weaker. Benny eventually stabs him in the back and the robot malfunctions and gets destroyed. Meanwhile, Richard's robot Roscoe appears in the room. He decides to fight back, so he throws a blade at it, but it doesn't move. His robot throws a blade back at him and it slices his leg. He falls down and begs the robot not to harm him. However, the robot blends him in his belly with the blades in his hands. It then goes and gets a vacuum cleaner, then sticks it in his wound, and it sucks out the blood and intestines from his belly while he screams in pure agony, and eventually he dies. After Benny destroyed the robot, Jack lures Benny towards him. Benny chases after him and trips on a trapped wire, which lights up a gas and balloons, causing an explosion. After the smoke clears, Jack sees that Benny isn't harmed at all. He throws a tiny sword at him, but he dodges it and falls to the ground. Benny now has a sword up against Jack's neck, ready to kill him. Jack struggles and picks up a remote, when suddenly Roscoe shows up and goes to attack Jack but their hands collide mid-air while they're both going in for the kill. Suddenly, they both turn on each other and start fighting. Roscoe eventually pins him down, but before he goes for the kill, Jack presses the remote he picked up and a plank with nails drops from the roof and knocks off Roscoe causing him to malfunction. Defeated, it jumps off the window and rolls away into the night. Afterwards, Benny walks up to Jack and punches him for trying to kill him, then runs up the stairs to his lady friend. Jack realizes that she's in danger, so he picks up a knife and runs towards them and finds that Benny has pinned her down with a knife on her throat ready to kill her. Suddenly, the police show up at the house and with a megaphone, tell Jack to surrender. They think that he has caused all the murder Murders. Jack decides to plead with Benny not to harm her, and gets down to his knees and tells Benny to cuddle him. This moves Benny, so he puts his knife down, runs towards him, and they cuddle. While they're in their moment, Jack picks up a knife ready to kill Benny when suddenly, the woman shoves Benny away and saves him. Benny then picks up the knife, runs, and front flips through the window and lands outside next to the police. Seeing this, the police shoot their pellet guns at Benny. Jack then runs outside to save him when one of the stray bullets strike him and he falls to the ground. Benny gets up once more and runs towards the police but they spray him with more bullets. He jumps in the air towards them and the final bullet gets him, and he finally dies, with Jack lying on the ground right next to him. Two months later, they vacate the house. The police help them cover up the story because it would be too absurd to try and explain it to their superiors. As the movie ends, the woman in the attic is shown already dead after starving to death. That means six deaths in absolutely horrifying ways.